My name is Kelly Magnus and I'm the Jamaica Country Lead for Fight for Peace and your chair for this afternoon's activities. Welcome to you all. I think you'll agree that we have a strong mix of partners in the room and what we hope to do today is to begin a conversation about engaging that partnership to provide practical solutions to youth employment. Typically in Jamaica when we talk about unemployment, we talk about it in terms of its impact on the economy. Today we want to expand that conversation a little and talk about the link between unemployment and violence and how very practical approaches to providing youth employment can help to both increase our productivity and reduce youth violence. Why is youth employment so important? Youth is a period of transition and vulnerability. This vulnerability appears to intensify with globalization and increased global competition. Long periods of unemployment have a lasting effect on self-esteem, self-respect, and a sense of one's own achievement and worth. Young people in Jamaica today bear a disproportionate share of the burden of the unemployment crisis and face barriers to entering the labor market. For example, potential employers often expect youth to have previous work experience even for entry-level positions. So in many cases, young people cannot get a job because they have no work experience, and they can't get any work experience because they're not being offered any jobs. It's not just about a wage. It's about identity, and it's about self-definition. And therefore, that relationship with their employer becomes extremely important uh, throughout uh, their growing years, throughout the end of their adolescence, toward their adult years. What was also very important, Joe mentioned the importance of the softer skills. It's not just about uh, being able to get young people trained for work, ready uh, to go to job interviews. We've also learned that personal development skills are absolutely key for young people to be successful. So we developed a theory of change. And not only is that important for us to be able to show the transition in terms of qualitative and quantitative indicators, but it also helps young people get more job ready. And the basic proposition is the same for everyone in this room, I believe. If you feel good about yourself, you're able to communicate with other people in an uh, open setting such as this, listen as well as talk, and you believe you have a future, you're much more likely to change your behavior. It's much more likely that your choices are going to be around education and employment um, and your situation. If you have a low self-esteem, you can't communicate and you don't believe you're going to be living past 18 years of age, why would you study? Why would you go for a job? The bank is investing in the region heavily into on-the-job training programs, active labor market policies, and being able to work directly with the private sector. Reason being is because we've understand through decades of implementing projects throughout the region, Latin America and the Caribbean, that the, the key is held from the private sector. It is the private sector that provides jobs. So it begs the question, who are the leaders into assessing what are the skills needs are and the quality assurance mechanisms that are in place? So today we're here with an opportunity in front of you to be able not to just be a part of the network, but embrace it and take ownership of it and capitalize on it. And in the long run, not only are we going to create that social impact for people like Mike, but also will make our companies more productive by increasing labor productivity, and in turn will make our industries more competitive in the region, thus generating growth. We have a very good program uh, that we have in the company called Learning for Life that basically closes the loop. So Learning for Life, what it does is it tr it's gives training to, uh, to the youth. Uh, that's why it's very important that we connect with Ute and Neo through this. So we train people, and we're now training them in agriculture. Uh, so that's how we're closing the loop with our farms and with cassava. So we train people around how to grow, harvest, and, and make cassava productive. But we also give them the tools on how do they have to uh, negotiate better, manage themselves, uh, and, and, and also be better at what they do, uh, and, and being better managed, and being more employable. 
So that's been amazing. We've trained 100 uh, young Jamaicans so far, 100% employed in our farms. But the ambition is to go to 1,000 uh, and be able to employ directly close to 200, but then allow other farmers that will be selling cassava to us to employ these, uh, these young Jamaicans. All right. As I said before, the labor market information system, it has three components. We have the labor market intelligence, the skills bank, and of course, the electronic labor exchange. The electronic labor exchange, of course, it is an internet-based system which facilitates the efficient matching of job seekers with employers, and we provide both online and offline services. Some of the online services that we provide for the job seekers is that they can go on the website, and the website is www.lmis.gov.jm. So they can go to the website, they can register, they can post their resumes, and they can apply for the vacancies that are online. So and employers, they do the same, they register, they post their vacancies, and of course they have access to the database of over 12,000 job seekers. We want employers to understand the level of commitment and determination we put in trying to apply for your jobs in your organization. And so we cannot settle just for you to brush it aside just because of where we are from. Because a job for myself and any one of my peers is not just waiting to collect at the end of a work period. A job is really survival for us. Survival in the sense that we can put food on our tables, pay our bills, and fend for ourselves. A job in our eyes is building network, finding new people, introducing them to the community, allowing them to come and support our small businesses. Having a job build positive role models for our community. It brings forth a different level of exposure. Allowing persons to see how things are run in an organized fashion. A job instills discipline, knowing that you need to get to bed early, thus to get up early to get on time. Key thing, a job brings respect and understanding of chain of command, which in our community life is ever present. In closing, as a young entrepreneur myself, I will not stand here and defend the youngsters who are not qualified, the ones who are not interested, and the ones who mean business no good. No, I stand here today to let you know that when you look at a resume, the address of that applicant should never ever play any role in your decision making. Should, should never be uh, uh, in their decision making. Because if those persons have the qualifications and the requisite skills, the least we ask is that we be invited to the interviews. And so I implore you, that is imperative, that we try and change the stigma that young people from my community and across Jamaica, I can say, that you do not want to employ us because of where we are from. And so, to my future employers, I am asking you, take consideration that these persons are from the garrison, but they do have the qualifications and we need those jobs, because it is our survival. And that is the only way you can change our personal future and also the future of our communities. So thank you. We've heard Delano say unemployment does not exist in a vacuum and neither can the solution. So we have to be mindful of supporting programs that are necessary to make these employment programs work and those include parenting trainings. We've had suggestions for home visits for um, young people in inner city communities, training for mentors so that they know how to really maximize the possibilities within that role. Um, and the inclusion of social skills and employability skills earlier in the curriculum and for younger people when these interventions are being designed. So looking at including primary institutions and possibly early childhood institutions in the schools that are included in these kinds of interventions. Thank you all for coming and please have a safe and happy holiday season.